Director of English and Home School Literacy here at Newlands Golf Girls. And one of the biggest things that when Camille came to me to talk about this, uh, that I wanted to share was this idea of utilising both your English department and your literacy coordinator, they sometimes have the same hat, to actually support what's going on in the classroom. Now if there's any of you that are still have the luxury, effectively, of having a library service connected with your school. It is one of the things that I would seriously promote. Here in Newland, we have that luxury. We have a fantastic library service. And we've actually been using the concept of getting book boxes on a half-termly basis from, uh, from the library. We put forward from all subject areas which particular subject area we'd like to study and request based on um, actual reading age as, a pro, as, a, as opposed to stage, uh, the, the types of literature that we'd like. So we have everything coming through from sort of primary texts to support our EAL learners, very picture heavy, picture driven, through to appropriately sort of you know, age 16, 17 um, literature. Um, just a couple of uh, websites if you're not particularly familiar with them, I would seriously recommend both of these. Um, both dealing with the concept of photographs linked directly to the word. It breaks it down into phonics. You can hear it orally as well. One of the glorious things about wordsmith.net is that you can actually create your own quizzes, you can create your own um, anagrams, uh, crosswords, all sorts of useful resources that once your VAL speaker becomes slightly more adept in the English language, you can actually begin to build specifically um, targeted resources that will help develop your particular subject area. Um, if you search online, um, you, there really are so many out there, but we just find sometimes a lot of the United States ones can be a little bit dodgy with the spelling. So uh, in just case of double checking, but I would seriously recommend both the photographicdictionary.com and wordsmith.net. One of the biggest things that I wanted to sort of talk about was this idea of darts. Those of you that have been teaching as long as I have will remember this the first time round. So it's the directed activities for reading, for targeting reading. And really it's about sucking eggs in some respects. Um, close exercises, text reconstruction and text marking are all absolutely crucial to an EAL learner starting to piece together the actual construction of sentences which sometimes is the most problematic part of an EAL learner developing those written and reading skills in English. One of the things that we have been looking at quite closely here, and Camille's presentation links in with mine, is this idea of using graphic organisers. And it was, I was interested to hear about the writing being a problem um, from this sort of more national research, because it is one of the things that we've focused on here, using visual tools to help stimulate the child's processes. It will help child make sense of the text. One of the sort of big things that we've tried again to focus on here is to it be inclusive. When a child does come back into our mainstream um, educational provision, including them, having the same texts, maybe at a slightly different um, level, or maybe with, like I said, having, having them do activities that have got words missing, where they're actually piecing together the text, or perhaps they're actually sequencing one of the big things for us, and again, I know it's sucking eggs, but just avoid reading becoming dull and slow because it will lose an EAL learner. You're actually better, we found, if you keep the pace as you would do for any other student in your school. Actually keep it dynamic, keep it focused, get them acting it out as well. Actually helps them to get sentence structures and meanings behind words. 